Uh, apparently, Obama's going to be speaking at their commencement uh, next month, early next month, in the, within the first couple of weeks. Seniors are being asked to provide birth certificates, social security numbers, and citizen status, all seniors, citizen status, to the Secret Service. And some people are upset about this because obviously some of the students are probably um, undocumented students, if we can call them that. Uh, so kind of interesting that uh, these poor students are going to be forced to go through these massive background checks and prove you're a citizen but, uh, for, for Obama, uh, but Obama does not want uh, Arizona to do the very same thing. Also regarding uh, illegal immigrants, I saw this horrid uh, uh, trailer for this movie coming out, coming out called Machete. Um, and basically, it's about this guy who is upset with a with a some sort of politician. He's either a congressman or a senator, for his stance on Ill illegal immigration and how he wants to toughen toughen the laws regarding immigration. So this guy basically just goes on this killing rampage, uh, and and seeks to go out and assassinate uh, people uh, on his way up to this congressperson. At least that's what the that's what the trailer uh, appears to be conveying. And um, the interesting thing about this movie is that it was made in part from tax incentives provided by the Texas Film Commission. Isn't that great? Uh, a division of Governor Rick Perry's office and a spokesman from that office uh, confirmed that funding was provided but would not comment on whether that was an appropriate use of tax dollars, uh, a film again called Machete. Uh, <laughs> just, just great stuff. I mentioned uh, last year, I think it was, later last year, that our next bailout would be uh, unions uh, and pension funds. And I had people say, well, they can't do that. They can't. They can't. They don't have any money. They can't. They can't. They can't. Well, they are. Uh, Robert Casey's bill called the Create Jobs and Save Benefits Act of 2010 uh, is basically a transfer of $165 billion uh, that they have in pension debt to the U.S. taxpayer. Um, Labor unions, of course, have been promising their workers these, these massive pensions. Uh, if, if you work you know, anywhere from three to five to seven years at a union, you have a lifetime of benefits after that fact. Uh, and again, it's, it's bankrupting the unions. It's, it's, it's partly the reason why we see the audio companies in, in, in such a, a state of, of, of failure. So now we're going to bail out these unions. We're not going to cut back on cut back on benefits or pensions. We're just going to, uh, you know, stick them, stick them, stick us with with more taxes. The AFL, CIO, SCIU, and Teamsters, of course, are uh, very excited about this this new bailout plan. Uh, and of course, politically, uh, any any of the politicians who support unions are going to gain even more clout uh, as a result as a result of this bill. You're listening to the Amy McManus Show on AM 1480 WLEA. Welcome back to the Amy McManus Show on AM 1480 WLEA. Once again, you can listen uh, on the internet WLEA.net. Came across some more information about Elena Kagan, uh, the Supreme Court nominee at Harvard. Uh, she was there when they were implementing some of their uh, law study programs, and she was uh, the primary um, author of of a document that changed Harvard's, the way Harvard teaches a law. And basically uh, <laughs> what she said was that it was no longer a requirement for first year law students to study constitutional law. They can choose to study it later on if they like. Instead, uh, she and some of her fellow professors uh, created these, these programs that include things like global law and international le legalese. Uh, and, and things like that. So uh, Kagan, again, um, she 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 fits in. She fits into to the uh, to everybody out there at the uh, Obama administration. On to some more uh, some cultural news. The British Medical Journal, The Lancet, uh, put out a report recently that there has been a 35 percent reduction in in maternal deaths. Uh, maternal deaths meaning women who die in childbirth uh, since 1980. Uh, we've had. Uh, 343,000 maternal deaths, um, that's in 2008, but in 1980 we had half a million, 500,000. So there's been this drop, an average of 1.4% per year. Now you'd think that most women around the world who care about women and children would think this is good news, right? Well, no, not exactly. Uh, the editor of the report, Richard Horton, has said that before he, he submitted this, this paper uh, to, to the Lancet, he was invited, and he won't say by whom, uh, to delay or withhold the publication. 
Now, basically, he was implying that some of the, the extreme abortion advocates did not want him to, to report that maternal deaths have gone down because that has been what they use to dying in childbirth. So they basically pressured him to not put the... To, to not put the the, uh, the report forth or to at least delay uh, because they just didn't like the sound of it. They felt it would hurt hurt their agenda because, you know, they care so much. They care so much uh, about women. Uh, also, out of Washington, D.C., I've, I've uh, been keeping up on this uh, Kermit Gosnell, the abortionist I, I reported about um, who's had his license revoked and he's had all these botched uh, legal abortions. Uh, they're still probing his, his clinic, uh, but on May 20th, he's going to face uh, other charges, other disciplinary, disciplinary charges. Uh, they haven't come out and said what else they've found, but apparently upon, uh, you know, scouring that abortion clinic, he will have more charges brought out uh, against him.